I just want to walk through Psalm 112. It really spoke to my heart these last few days. <clears throat> what I want to talk about is, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. The psalm reads as follows, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there riseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. I love this scripture. I love this passage. I love how it outlines to you very clearly. It's like, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. We just got through Psalm 111, and it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. And this song goes right into that same motif, that same idea of praise ye the Lord. It begins to outline, yes, it is the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, that being. And yes, a good understanding of all they that do it, you'll see right away that those two things go together. You're fearing God and you're keeping His commandments. Those are hand in hand. Your fear, as well as your love towards God, is shown by how you delight in His commandments and how you do His commandments. The man that feareth the Lord, in verse 2, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. I think we all desire that have children, one day would have children, that your seed would be mighty upon the earth. Does that mean they're going to be the greatest, the biggest, the, 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 no, it means they're going to be strong. It means they're going to be steadfast, immovable. They're going to be mighty upon the earth. That generation of the upright shall be blessed. That same generation is going to continue in the foundation that you lay for them. And if you lay the foundation for your seed on Christ, they cannot waver. They can only increase. Mind you, there's going to be decisions that they have to make, but... The man that feareth the Lord, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth, and the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches, verse 3, shall be in his house, and righteousness endureth forever. That wealth, again, I don't necessarily think that's just monetary. For, for richness and, and riches and wealth is often the eye of the beholder. The man with a million dollars in his bank looks at the man with ten million dollars and thinks, man, he's rich. The man with a penny... Just one, maybe two to rub together, looks at the man with ten bucks and says, man, that guy's rich, right? It's always comparative, but wealth and rich, in other words, personal wealth, personal rich, personal, you know, ah, I'm, I'm good, I'm full, I'm, I'm rich beyond, that, that contentment is with the man that feareth the Lord. His righteousness endureth forever. Obviously, we know the righteousness of Christ is above all, and those that possess it, keep that righteousness and have that righteousness, but even the man that feareth the Lord, his own righteousness also endureth forever through Christ. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. So that person has light when things are cloudy, has light when things are dark, has light when a normal man could not see. Why? Because he fears the Lord and keeps his commandments. He is gracious. This is him extending what God has given him through the fear of the Lord and keeping his command. He's now gracious to others. The grace of God has been given unto that righteous person, the man that feareth God, and he's now able to give graciousness unto others. He's able to be full of compassion unto the others that serve with the foundation of the fear of the Lord. Surely, verse 6, he shall not be moved forever. Surely he shall not be moved. Again, he's steadfast. He's not budging. He's going to make a decision. He's going to stick with it. He's not going to waver. He's not going to halt between two opinions. He's not going to allow the winds of, of this world, the waves that come in through to move him from his sure path, for he's founded upon the rock. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous, again, shall be in everlasting remembrance. And I think that's a nice thing to know, too, is that you'll be in remembrance. Nobody remembers the name of the wicked man unless you walk through the tombstone 
No one's in the cemetery. You see his name printed there. But men that are great, men that are feareth God, men that even are contained within the scriptures, uh, Moses, Enoch, who walked with God. His name was in remembrance. Why? Because he started it from the foundation of fearing the Lord. David, right? Solomon. These names are had in remembrance because they feared God above all things. And you too, if you fear the Lord, if you delight greatly in his commandments, can have remembrance amongst the world when you pass on. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. This is, again, the steadfastness, the surety, the, the, uh, the, the not being moved. When, when evil tidings come, he's not going to be moved. He fears God above all things. His heart is fixed. Why? Trusting in the Lord, right? When your heart is fixed upon Christ, the everlasting rock, the God of our salvation, the immovable King of kings, Lord of lords, right? Um, how can you be pushed from where you're standing? How can you be moved by evil tidings that sweep through? The answer is you can't. You trust the Lord. Those that fear the Lord. His heart is established. Again, that heart isn't going to move. Though it's deceitful above all things, if it's established within the fear of the Lord, he shall not be afraid. Why? Because his heart is not going to be moved. His heart, though it's wicked, is not going to be swayed. Because above all things, he is fearing God. He has no fears until he shall see his desire upon his enemies. I love this because our desire, God gives us the desire of our hearts. Why, when we're yielded to God... And now our heart's desire becomes his heart desire. There's no difference. We're in unity with the Spirit. And now my desire is what God desires. And how could God not give his own desire upon his children? He would never do so. So don't be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. What is, the, what is the desire that ultimately God puts upon his enemies? They're removed. They're cast into everlasting darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. So there's no fear that needs to come upon the man that feareth the Lord from this world. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor. He is, his righteousness again endureth forever. He, his horn shall be exalted with honor. There's many things there, dispersed and given. Giving is a great aspect of those that fear God. If you fear God, um, your worries are, are null and void. You're able to disperse, you're able to give. You're able to do for others as you would have do unto you. You're able to lift up somebody who is poor and allow them to be blessed through you. And when you give to others, you don't expect to get anything back. Why? Because you don't need to have somebody thank you. You don't need to have somebody return the favor. Why? Because your giving came by way of God blessing you because you fear him and you gave to others. You dispersed. So then you know that when you give to somebody, you can do it without, without having to hold something against them. You can do it in a righteous way because your next blessing is coming the same way your first blessing came. And that's through God. Exalted with honor. That's those that fear the Lord. And the wicked shall see it, right? They shall behold the one that is blessed for fearing the Lord. They shall mock. They shall gnash with their teeth. And it says here, they shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with, gnash with his teeth. In other words, he's, he's just uh, gritting, grinding, angry when he sees the reward of the righteous, those that fear God and delight in his commandments. The wicked is angry with how he has prospered. The wicked is angry with how he's able to give to the poor. The wicked is angry, grieved with how he is wealthy, with how he is full of righteousness, with his graciousness and full of compassion towards others. The wicked shall see it and be grieved, gnashing with their teeth and melt away. In other words, gradually, though they will fight and though they will bicker and though they will try to get at you and try to pull the man that is righteous and fearing God down, hey, he fears nothing but God himself. The desire of the wicked, again, shall perish. And that's how this psalm ends. It's a great psalm just, just to just give you and just to outline. There's so many like it where it would just tell you, hey, these are the blessings that go unto the God, unto the man who feareth the Lord and delights greatly in his commandment. What, what better encouragement can we have for, for wanting to fear God, wanting to lift up God to his proper place and just simply do what he says? What a blessing that is. All right, Heavenly Father, I thank you God for this.